With the dominance of the small Carvays crossover vehicle, it's very easy to forget about the rough and tumble beginnings of the old school body on frame SUV. Well, today I've got just that. It's the 2018 Toyota Sequoia. This vehicle was launched back in 2008. Yes, this vehicle is just about 10 years old today. So it won't take you long when you look across this segment to figure out that not only is this the elder statesman in the Toyota range, but the entire segment. Of course, the Sequoia is named after a giant tree that lines the West Coast, especially in California. And that's appropriate given its size. It's 6,000 pounds. It's got three rows of seating. And as you can see, it's rather large. Instead of a complete redesign this year, Toyota opted instead for a nip and a tuck, some redesign work on the outside. They've added in some creature comforts, convenience and technology features. But I'm wondering, is that enough to keep this lumbering beast relevant in 2018? Well, today we're gonna hop in and find out. So what are we dealing with here? Well, as I alluded to off the top of this video, this Sequoia is an old school, full size body on frame SUV. The underpinnings are shared with the Toyota Tundra pickup truck, which means in more than one way, it's best to consider this vehicle basically a truck with an enclosed bed and a third row of seats. Well, what's the competition for a vehicle like this? We're talking about vehicles like the Chevy Tahoe and Suburban, the brand new and very lovely Expedition from Ford, maybe the Armada from Nissan. These are big, full-size, rugged, capable vehicles. People buy these uh, looking for the ability to tow. Either they've got a lot of friends or a lot of kids they need to fit in the back. And let's be honest, at 70, 80, $90,000 and upwards of a hundred grand in some cases, people are looking for a little bit of status. So does this Toyota Sequoia give you that bling factor? Well, looking around in here, I'm gonna have to say no. That's really where this vehicle starts to show its age. And that's gonna be a defining feature of this review is going back constantly to the fact that this vehicle is now 10 years old. That is an eternity in the automotive world, and there's no better place to start discussing that issue than the interior. Now this is a Toyota product, so the interior is logically laid out. The buttons do what you expect them to do, and they're all well within reach, even though the interior of this car is absolutely vast. The materials, however, uh, very truck-like, very utilitarian, lots of hard plastics. Now those will probably wear well, but when we're looking at the competition, again, 70, 80, $90,000 and up, it's not nearly as sophisticated or plush or luxurious. But that's okay because not everybody is buying one of these to have a baller truck. They're buying it because it's practical. And this Sequoia, even 10 years in, is pretty sufficient at that. So the interior is definitely comfortable. You get a great commanding view of the road in front of you. Also, tons of cubbies everywhere. You've got a deep cubbies on the side lower door panels. You've got an enclosed cubby, perhaps uh, for your wallet or for your sunglasses. You've also got two glove compartments, not one. You've got two of them and there's certainly the space in here. Going back to the seats for a second, very comfortable. Uh, they're quite wide and quite plush, but there's lots of adjustability, including thigh and lumbar support. For, so great for a tall and for big drivers. You also get standard heated seats, which is nice to have if you live in a cold climate. Ditto the automatic climate control, which is adjustable if you're in the back seats, not just the front. There is perhaps no more obvious sign that this is a slightly outdated vehicle than the head unit. It's a 6.1 inch corner to corner unit. This is the fourth Toyota product I've been in in the past four months, so it's starting to look awful familiar. Now, if you're in a $17,000 Toyota Yaris, that's not such a problem, but if you look across the segment, it's full of big, bright, beautiful, powerful infotainment screens, and this is not one of them. So there's no navigation with the base SR5 model, you've got to pay up to uh, the limited and the platinum trim lines to get that. Now you do get Bluetooth connectivity, so you can play your Spotify, it'll read your text messages, you get your basic functionality, uh, but just very outdated, nowhere near as sophisticated as some of the rivals. Well, I'm in a traffic jam here and I'm starting to sweat because that means I'm gonna to have to visit a gas station and my wallet is about to get a lot lighter. This thing is thirsty. 381 horsepower, 401 foot-pounds of torque from a naturally aspirated eight-cylinder engine. It's the only engine you can get, and it is routing power to the rear wheels through a six-speed automatic transmission. Now, of course, you can select it into all-wheel drive 
if you choose. For economy purposes, I've had it in rear wheel drive only. And I've still, after 487 kilometers of driving time, a lot of which, by the way, was on the highway, I'm averaging 18.7 liters per 100 kilometers. So all that power, all that grunt gives you capability, which is important. It moves this 6,000 pound vehicle with relative ease, and it'll tow 7,200 pounds worth of your stuff, but you're gonna pay at the pumps. I'll be forthright in saying I don't expect super sharp handling dynamics from a 6,000 pound full-size three-row SUV. However, this Sequoia has a disconcerting lightness in the steering feel. It's got a ton of body roll. It feels like the steering column is attached to the front wheels via a big bowl of pudding. You turn the steering wheel, usually with just one finger, which is all that's required, and eventually the front wheels turn and you heave over and it's just, it's a production. Now it works and I understand some people are gonna like that. They just wanna sit back, tow a boat all day and one hand it in comfort. But if you're looking for a greater sense of solidity, attachment to the road and just a, just a degree of sharpness, you're gonna wanna look elsewhere. If I haven't made it clear enough, this is a big truck, and that size pays dividends with an oversized second row of seats. Lots of adjustment is available, letting your passengers recline, take a breather, and hopefully leave you alone. Climate controls are well within reach of second row passengers, but materials are just okay relative to others in the segment. Lots of heavy wearing hard plastics that don't look great, but are likely to age well. Lift the tailgate, a manual process with this base SR5, to reveal a cavernous cargo area. Even behind the third row, there's lots of room for extra large suitcases, groceries, or whatever else you have to carry around with you. The third row electronically lowers using buttons in two locations. The first is in the back cargo area, and the second is along the rear wheel well, accessible to second row passengers. The second row does what every other SUV does and folds down manually, except these are virtually flat, making it very easy to load large objects. Overall, this place is gigantic, nearly 3,400 cubic liters behind the driver's seat, which is hilariously large. And because this is hard-hitting journalism, yes, it's absolutely possible for a fully grown adult to sleep back here, if you're so inclined. So how much is this old school fun gonna cost you? Well, my demonstration model is the base model. It's the SR5, and that goes for just a hair under $60,000. Now, for that, you're getting the 5.7 liter V8, you're getting the six-speed automatic transmission, you're getting that third row seat, the locking center differential, the selectable two to four wheel drive, as well as the tow package. Those things are standard equipment on every single Sequoia. You're getting everything else I talked about today. So the 6.1 inch infotainment screen, no native navigation, no Android Auto, no Apple CarPlay, although it will sync with your phone via Bluetooth so you can play your Spotify, it'll read your text messages to you. You also get a backup camera, so some reasonably good equipment there. Now the third row seat will go up and down via that electric switch located in the trunk or in the second row. That's standard equipment as well. This SR5 base model, you get 18 inch standard wheels. Now the only real option is the TRD Sport Pack, which is basically an appearance pack, a couple mechanical changes as well, to make this vehicle drive in a slightly sportier way, but mostly it's to make it look more aggressive. So you'll get 20 inch wheels, some dark, more aggressive looking trim pieces outside and inside. And again, they stiffen the suspension up. For my money, $5,000 is a bit rich. I think most people are buying this car to tow and to be a practical people mover, not really a sporty car. The Limited and the Platinum trim lines start at $67,000 and $75,000 respectively. Those include unique appearance packages depending on which line you go for. You get bigger wheels, more aggressive look overall, and different trim pieces on the inside. You also get starting with the Limited trim at $67,000, Navigation. And if you opt for the Platinum, you can get a rear seat entertainment package, so a couple of screens uh, into the headrest of the first row. Now, even this SR5 in base trim without that $5,000 TRD Sport Pack is just under $64,000 when you factor in PDI and a couple of other fees. Now, that excludes HST, meaning this vehicle is not inexpensive. It is in step with the rest of the segment, but the rest of the segment is a lot newer, a lot more modern, a lot more efficient, especially when you take a look at this head unit. The competition have a lot of big, bold, beautiful screens with a lot of features really makes you second guess this Sequoia. In many ways, 2018 is a transition year for Toyota with a number of their core vehicles aging out 
and being replaced by newer, more exciting models. Unfortunately, the Sequoia is late to that party and after 10 years of being on the road, it's in desperate need of a redesign. This eight cylinder engine is very thirsty. The interior is very outdated and the head unit, the infotainment system, by modern standards is antiquated. Now it's still a capable vehicle and I know that some people are going to be attracted to its old school sensibilities. It's a rough and tumble, rugged truck that is still capable and quite comfortable to drive but there's no denying that there are better drives on the road, more capable, more efficient, more sophisticated vehicles in this segment. For Motormouth Canada, my name is Mike Gurr. Thanks for watching.